Hey everyone, it's the DEI working group meeting for chaos. It's July 19th, you're here with all of us. Yay, we're having a really good day, I think today, maybe, I don't know. I am, even though I'm a little tired. Yeah. Yesterday I was running on pure adrenaline, I think. So today I'm kind of digging deep a little bit. I got my, I got my coffee, so I'm good. It's, it makes everything better, really. Oh, let me share here. Make sure I'm sharing the right thing. Here we go. I have 47 tabs open. I got, you know, the use. The use. Let's check my this over here. Here we go. Yeah, and if somebody can do me a favor and if new people join, just throw the minutes in there, whoever happens to got be it. here. And um, just a quick reminder, this meeting, like all of our chaos meetings, are under the chaos code of conduct. So just keep that in mind as you interact with us here today. Um, and if you don't want your camera on, that is absolutely completely 100% fine. We do not care at all. Feel free to just, um, you know, you can chat in the chat. You can raise your hand and talk without the um, camera. Like, you know, we don't care. We're fine. I see we do have um, some new faces. Steve, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Good to see you. Um, do we have anybody else who is new here? Hello, everyone. Yay. Hello, I'm, yeah, this my name is Steve Fu. I'm from Oregon State University. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see oh, you. Hey, Steve. Nice to meet you. Anita had mentioned you the other oh. day. So uh, nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you. And it was really nice to meet you at Fossey as well. Yeah. So, yes, nice here. to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, well, let's, if you have not added your name and you would like to do that and tell us just how you're feeling today, that would be great. Um, if you don't want to, that's also completely valid. Again, we're, we're super easy here. It's, it's really on you, what you feel like doing. Um, so the first thing we have is um, just want to bring up this onboarding course that we've been talking about. And for those who are new or who haven't heard about this, um, what we're trying to do is really take our hour long onboarding fire hose of information that we used to give to our newcomers and really break it into more digestible bits that people can go through at their own pace and when they have time and um, complement that or supplement that, I guess, with some um, in-person or virtual face-to-face -face interaction through our newcomer hangout. So what we um, are going to try is doing um, like a like a course, a chaos course in a learning management system, just like you would take at a university or a, a school. Um, and we're going to just see how that goes and see if it resonates with people. So we've been talking about this for a little while. Um, I, I did present this as a part of a presentation I gave at Fossey with um, Justin Flory on just some things we're trying or want to try in our communities. He's in the Fedora community and obviously I'm here. Um, and that was one thing that I brought up and um, it seemed like people were super interested in that that concept of oh yeah it is just you're trying to educate folks on your project and what a good way to do that by you know just having this this course that they can go through and um, I, it also you know is really helpful for newcomers who come and they want to do stuff <laughs> but they don't know what to do yet so this kind of gives them something to do as they're ramping up and ready to contribute so um that was awesome and then the second thing is i realized looking back through the notes um, from the community meeting and this meeting and we have a few different things kind of going on with this there's like a a doc that we're just putting ideas for content in um and then there's i think matt you're working on like trying to sort out a platform for us um so i just kind of thought maybe we should like make this a little more of a not super formal, but just yeah. like centralize it a little bit better so we kind of can include those who want to be included in it. If that makes sense. Yeah, so I have a, yeah. a few comments. I'm, of course, like super interested in this in the courses, and I think it ties well with uh, the chaos regional leads as well. So with the work that Ruth is doing in chaos Africa and Ruth and others, um, Mincella is starting in uh, Latin America, and Christy is starting in the Balkans. So I think, would this also kind of be part of that? It sounds like there's like a set of courses that might be chaos specific, and mm -hmm. maybe a set of courses that are more open source general. Is that fair to say? 
Yeah, and I think too, it could even be, um, you know, whatever is needed in, in those regions. So that maybe there's something on GitHub that we, you know, have people go look at. And it, like, we wouldn't even necessarily need to create that content. Maybe the, our learning module is go read this other thing over here or go watch this video that's done by somebody else. But it's like kind of in our steps of you know how to how to really prepare to contribute and to prepare to be even if they don't end up contributing to chaos i mean i think we've said that before like yeah. we that's not we don't really care so much we just want to invite these folks who are brand new to open source to the table because they don't you know we need to to make sure that they understand and, and appreciate the opportunities and can take advantage of the opportunities that open source has so yeah. um yeah i think that's that's the thing so there will be like a chaos course maybe and then all these like um supplement or spokes around. I'm not sure. But um, I feel like, yeah, because this could have a potential to get kind of complicated. So I just wanted to like, maybe we need to make a team or have a channel. Like, I don't know, whatever that looks like. Yeah, I think having so, um, it Sean. I mean, I, um, so I, I, the thought I have is we could use GitHub Classroom and link that to a learning management system because the GitHub Classroom has the advantage of allowing us to set up exercises for everyone who wants to do it where they can actually practice github activities and actions and kind of get a a scaffolded introduction to the whole open source world which would especially be useful to people who have never used github before um and and in terms of the learning management system if we want to use one there are a very really if we want to use one that's open source and I think we'll be around in 10 years. Moodle is probably the best choice. It's just that we need to get it set up at a very basic level. And then try not to do anything super fancy with it. Being on the GitHub Classroom or something like that. Thank you for sharing. Which one was that? GitHub Classroom, I think she said. Okay. Ruth, you're really quiet. Unless it was just me. No, yeah, sorry, I just said like I didn't know that there was something called GitHub Classroom. So thank you, Sean. For... Sure. Yeah, Elizabeth, I think I like the idea you put forward and giving that we can look at chaos to be a gateway to open source without it necessarily being the landing project of the open source like the end point. So we could tell it from the using the tunnel, uh, the funnels approach from general to very specific things. For example, folks in Africa may have some specific cities of things that wants to deal with their local community and some extend the Latin Americas, the different areas, but the general concept should really fit in any arbitrary uh, open source project. So the, the introductory course should really cover things that are very general to open source, then try to prepare folks also that they could be useful. Since we are preparing metrics for others to consume, so we are really like the gateway to others uh, open source in terms of metrics and analytics to understand open source. So I think this is the best place, Chaos could be a best place to, to look at different dynamics. So it's a good project. I like that uh, approach. Yeah. So, uh... I think we're we're kind of talking about three different things here. One of them is uh, one of them is onboarding to chaos. Another one is kind of general uh, guidance on open source and GitHub, and the other one is outreach around chaos metrics. Uh, and I think the the target audience for those things is all different. Uh, and in regards to the second one, the uh, uh, like guidance on GitHub, uh, GitHub provides a lot of that guidance on their own. We could really just point people there. I don't know that we need to recreate that content or, or create new content. Uh, so then what we're talking about is onboarding for chaos, and then outreach for chaos uh, products, if you will, right? Metrics, maybe Augur software or more lab software, 
And I think those two things are, are different enough that, that I would consider them to be two separate projects. So I think that, um, sorry if I cut anybody off, I didn't mean to. Um, so I think that I, I like the idea of, of again, utilizing stuff that is already written and not re, you know, reworking the wheel. I think the thing that I'm looking for in this is one central place that we can send people. So you come, you come to our course and here's, we will, we will help you find the places to go. So what the way I envision it may be different than others um, is that you would come, here's an intro to intro to open source, for instance. So here might be a little bit of content that we create, things that aren't covered in other places, like the nuance of interacting with folks, um, you know, what it's like to maybe be the only person that looks like you on a project or things like that, that really aren't available in other places that just kind of cover like the technological stuff about open source. Um, so you have that and then you have maybe, okay, now you're, you've gone through that. Okay, now go, go do this other thing over here and come back. Okay, now next thing is go do this other thing over here and come back to us. And we will just like help you navigate because there's so much out there that like if we just say, yeah, go watch a, you know, okay, go just go do this GitHub course over here. Like, it's, it's just like, I feel like we're pointing them away and I would rather just bring them back and, and keep it all in one sequential or one place for them to just know what they're doing and know where they're supposed to go, if that makes sense. Yeah, Matt, go for it. Maybe I we could break this into a couple different things to focus on. One would be a group that focuses on like what the content of whatever these courses might be and how those might be designed. So um, so you know, just kind of the structure that you're talking about, the structure that Kevin's talking about and Armstrong, like one group to kind of sort that that particular structure out. Um, the other would be a group to sort out the technology that would be available. So whether it's Moodle or GitHub Classroom or Google Classroom or whatever it might be, um, cause they just, they feel, I mean, obviously they'll come together, but mm, might be useful to kind of break those out a little bit. When it comes to the, to the activities people do as part of these, sorry, my dog. Uh, when it comes to the activities people do as part of these classes, I think the GitHub classroom and using will be helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. Yeah. So then, so then like that could be sorted out in this other group here. You know what I mean? Like, and how that would connect with Moodle and kind of what that would look like and show people. Like, I does, as an example, I'm not. Sure, like, would you go to Google Classroom first and then click something and it takes you to Moodle? Or do you go to Moodle first and then, like, just how that there's all- There's a, I mean, yeah, there's a, there's, I've looked into this. There's a plugin that um, Moodle has for connecting to a GitHub Classroom. Okay, so, like, you would probably be great to be on that, <laughs> that group to sort that out. Because if you've done it before, then that would be, that would be really helpful. We might also need a group for um, the um, the implementation of everything, or like the actual creation of like the videos and the content, um, and the, like the writing of it and all that. Or would you think would you lump that into the content and structure part? Okay, I, I lump that into the. Okay, like I have questions like around content and structure that do not need to be sorted out here, but they're things like. Um, Right. What do we need to create? Like, what are we trying? What stories are we trying to tell? What do we need to create? I even have questions like, how strict would we want to make a class? You know, like there are ways that you can really highly structure a class to make sure that people go module by module and they can't proceed without doing the prior module. Or is it more like, a, you know, choose what you would like kind of thing? Do we provide? Um, like a certificate of completion, I, you know, I, those are things that I think would be sorted out in, in content. Yeah, I love this idea because I, what I really am hoping is that we can include as many newcomers as possible because our newcomers are only newcomers once. <laughs> and so they have this like unique um, perspective that 
you know, those of us who've been around for a little while um, kind of don't have anymore. And so I can try to guess what people I think they might want to know or need to know, but um, I really want to get a lot of feedback and um, participation from our newcomers as we build it out. Because I think they have the they have the most experience in being a newcomer, so <laughs> I would really like to include as many as possible. And I think we also had mentioned we want to just make sure that um, like as we go through recording of the videos and um, you know the writing of stuff that we do, just kind of include a whole lot of diverse voices in in the presentation of the content as well. So um, yep. I like this setup because that gives it a little bit easier for us to kind of figure out where people belong and where they want to go and if they want to contribute. Um, I also just quickly wanted to add, I, at FOSSI, I was sitting right next to the Aperio folks who um, have Sakai. And so when I was talking to them about our idea, um, they were like, oh my gosh, that would be amazing to be able to do that for all the open source projects. Uh, like I, they were really excited about that. So um, they may be another one to look at if we haven't decided on platform. So I might just add them here because um, I don't like, know much like about Moodle? them. Yeah, it's an open source um, okay. solution. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of higher ed stuff at Aperio, so, but it's all open source and I think that would be awesome if we could have an open source solution if possible, but yeah. What other um, thoughts do we have around this? I think we haven't decided if we're going to do like the async communication has been to the cloud first, um, so it doesn't get lost in meetings. Um, so we haven't decided okay, um, would there be a group meeting or would there be like, will we have the conversation in the in the new commerce channel? So I think we haven't um, where will the conversation continue? Yeah. yeah, that's an excellent question. That was kind of what I was hoping we would figure out. Um, I like the idea of the new commerce channel. My only hesitation would be that I would not want it to get lost in all of the other newcomery stuff that happens in that channel. So I don't know if we need another channel, another Slack channel. Sorry, Kevin, another Slack channel. <laughs> um, but or if we just want to do it in the newcomer channel and then maybe have a separate meeting. Sorry, Matt, another meeting. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What do you all want? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, None of I, the above. I think a new Slack channel would make sense. Um, maybe we can call it education or something. Uh, because then people that are interested in the conversation or you know contributing to this can join there and we, we can keep talking about it. And then you know subsequent meetings. I second your idea, Ruth. So boom, done, decided. <laughs> and then we can, if we want to do have a meeting, um, I mean, we could also use this meeting to talk about stuff, but I don't like if there's other things, I don't know, because this meeting now we just keep piling stuff into this meeting. <laughs> We're like, ah, we'll just talk about a DEI. Um, so I don't know how y'all feel about that. What, what do y'all think? We could try to talk about it here as we're doing right now. I agree too. Okay, fair enough. Well, well, then that begs the question, should we just keep the conversation in the DEI working group? Like on that Slack channel? Uh-huh. Uh, that confusing? Well, we do have a badging, we do have a badging channel and we are using that for badging. Good point. Okay, so we're going to do an education, but uh, keep conversations about this in this meeting. Okay. I love when decisions are made. We'll try it. If it doesn't work, we'll change it. It's no big deal. Right? Right. That's what we do. And we would have, I think, 
we would have both conversations about content and structure and technology in the uh -huh. channel. Um, one more question then, should we open a separate repo or do it in the community repo? I feel like maybe a separate repo even. Or like the stuff that's created? The stuff that's created, um, that way we could create issues that we could point people to if we're looking for something specific for them to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Okay. As I was kind of pointing out earlier, there there are two different uh, uh, two kind of key different audiences for this. So one of the audience one of the audience would make this work sit in the community repo, and then the uh, the other audience for this work would actually be related to the uh, the communications work working group folks, right? So outreach versus internal internal work so it kind of it spans both boundaries uh, so i don't know if uh, uh but since it is existing on an external platform maybe we should link the communication folks in and and maybe maybe it uh maybe it ultimately lands with them if they have a repo or actually i don't think they have a repo do they I don't think so. I don't think so. And those meetings really don't happen anymore. Um, okay. It's all async now um, and pretty quiet. Yeah, Henrietta, go for it. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so from the perspective of a newcomer, um, I just want to find out um, what we are structuring. Do we intend to make it um, a self-paced course? or is something would be um, running maybe in cycles. So we'll have one for each quarter of the year or one for each half of the year. If it's going to run like that, then I think it would be great if they, we have some form of graduation ceremony or certificates or something. At least so people who participate have something to look forward to at the end of it. That is something I had not considered. Um, I was thinking it would just be self paced, but I kind of like the idea of like, hey, here's our new like class of of newcomers. And like you said, it kind of motivates them to finish. I think that's super interesting. And I, th I think I think it almost has to be self paced, but I don't think that rules out a graduation ceremony of some kind. Um, or maybe we can use a badging. Uh, process, but a graduation ceremony sounds kind of fun. I know that the um, the all in for students folks do that um, have that graduation ceremony, and um, I know Sarah can speak to that a little bit. But um, Ruth, go for it. Yeah, I was just going to say um, that's kind of like the model for all in Africa as well. To it will happen there to to. And then I also do very soon, I'll come back to this group to share the plan for all in Africa. Yeah, go ahead, Sarah. Thank you for teeing that up, Elizabeth. I had sent you a message privately. I just wasn't sure if it was okay to share with the group, but yes, um, the all in for students model is self paced. However, we do have a graduation ceremony and a company certificate that we provide to the students that have completed the course to celebrate this amazing accomplishment and to share that with the community. And um, I think it's been really well received by both the participants and also all of those who have been supporting them along the way. And then also being able to have that certificate and share on any of the professional pages, whether that's a resume or their LinkedIn has also been really useful. I would be happy to share that model and some of the best practices that we've learned. We've done two graduation ceremonies to date and we are preparing for our third cohort. So happy to share some of those best practices and any templates that we've had with this team. That would be fantastic. I, I think all in his kind of plowed a road here that we can learn from. 
GitHub Education also <clears throat> has a graduation ceremony that they run as well. Um, and so I'd be happy to connect you with the folk over there um, for any of their learnings or best practices uh, for doing this at scale. So far, we've only ever done this for like max 400 participants, but they've done it for thousands of students at a time. So it's a different, different learnings for both instances, but they could be helpful if you're thinking about how to do it for a much smaller cohort and then thinking about how this can scale for a much global, um, larger cohort as well. Yeah, if we have 4,000 people going through this, uh, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a little wine or something. I don't know, something, yeah. <laughs> so that it may help for just like the global approach. Like all of our students have been here in the US and they've had to accommodate students that are all around the world. So yeah. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, but that would be awesome. You know, uh, chaos scale to 4,000 students. <laughs> <laughs> You have to read every name, oh, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Henrietta, that was an excellent idea. Thank you so much for that. That's that's actually really exciting to think about. Um, I'm really glad you spoke up. Thank you for doing that. Um, it, who else has thoughts about any of this? All good. Really, okay. you know, I may have lots of thoughts, but we can sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to take the action item to do this um, and invite, uh, or do you all just want to find it? I don't know. I can invite you in, but where you can find it. I tell you what, put your, put your name here if you want me to invite you in or. I think you can drop it in the DI channel. And then maybe oh over. smart yeah. <laughs> that's why you're here ruth <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay yes all right so i guess we're good are we good to move on everyone's nodding thumbs up okay um do we want so i see this is here i'm guessing you probably put that in there matt the check-in on the repo because we haven't done that in a minute uh, i dropped that in Oh, smart. All right. Thank you. Do you want do you want to do this first and then uh, come back to it or should we prioritize it? Uh, that is up to you all. I'll tell you what, let's do this since we do have a couple badging things. I don't want to I don't want to carve too much into the badging um, half of this meeting. So if we do have some time at the end. And I can also, I, I tell you what, let's do this. I'll check on this and take care of anything that is like just, you know, old, stale, whatever. And then any um, any uh, action things I can bring up to next meeting. Would that be fair? Okay, I'll just look through it and see what's there because I haven't in a fat minute. So yeah, I will. <clears throat> After this meeting, there we go. Um, so quickly, event badging. I just wanted to let everyone know I'm a little bit behind on the issues, and we do have a couple of applications out there. So I will do that this afternoon. Um, I meant to do it yesterday. Just got time. Time just ran away from me, as it does sometimes. I was chasing it, and it still ran away. So I will do it this afternoon. Um, but if anybody's wondering, yes, I'm aware. It's it's okay. We got you. Um, and then I wanted to bring this up because I think you all talked about it last time about we did okay I didn't about know like, if we wanted to like does someone need to own this because we used to have those specific badging outreach meetings and we kind of just kept lumping them into other things so I didn't know if we need somebody to just kind of own it or if we just want to keep it open however you want to do it and if you want to update everybody that's cool um I hadn't really thought about this since the last meeting. I mean, it's okay if we move on to just project badging stuff. Okay. Okay, so um, do we want so We don't know. Yeah. Right now. We can't decide that right now. <laughs> <laughs> we have too many, too many things. Um, okay, and then the next thing I just want to um, remind everybody, there is a new Badger orientation today at 12 o'clock US Central Time. So if you're a newcomer and you would like to contribute to chaos, this is a fantastic way to do it. You do not have to know anything really about chaos or um, anything really. Um, essentially, you're verifying what applicants have told us that they do with regard to some of our DEI metrics. 
and hopefully it will only be about a 15 to 30 minute um, commitment per month. Uh, we try to spread those out as much as we can. So that's why we're always including new badgers um, to keep that pool of, of <laughs> pool of badgers pretty large, as large as we can. So if you're interested, show up. You don't have to register or anything like that. Just show up at 12 noon and then you can decide. It's not even a commitment by showing up. You can decide after that if you want to do it or not. So that's your reminder. And now we'll just move on to project badging. So I think there's some folks that have updates on this. Maybe. If you're on this team and you do have an update you would like to share, that would be great. Well, I mean, I can tell you right now, we have started kind of a pilot phase with a project who is at the moment putting together their DEI.md file. Um, and part of this pilot phase at the moment is kind of um, just being there if they have questions about putting together this file, if they have questions about how to kind of present the information in their DEI.md file. I think that's kind of the state we're in at the moment. Um, I'm not sure, like maybe a couple weeks for them to kind of assemble that document and then post it. And then following that, we're going to move into kind of the work that Sean and folks from Chaos Africa have been working on, which is the scan for the DEI.md file with this pilot project. Is that right, Sean? You're muted. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, do you know where that stands at the moment? Like, you, you seem to think it's really close. So, yeah, I think. Um... Maybe Ruth, the thing that we're waiting on right now is for the website to get launched. I know the design is complete, and I, uh, Ruth is indicating in chat that it's still in progress. So, okay, um, knowing knowing where it is in reference, and some of it, some of the work that I think needs to be done might be able to involve this group because I think if if memory serves, and I think it does, that you know some of what's getting worked on right now is the content that explains and helps people navigate through the badging process. So I think we might be close to a, a point where it can be launched, but we are, might also need some content help and maybe Ruth could speak to that. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, for the website, it's still in progress. And then Anita had worked on some content. Let me pull up um, the document. So um people can also drop feedback on that because that's the content that shows up on the website and then i'm trying to find the link to that document and if you have it you can drop it as well um, so and then enoch also has some updates i know they they are trying to connect um, things on the back end side so enoch has some updates and some meetings with them to sort out the api um i think enoch is on this call as well Important. And it just provided the doc, Ruth. Yeah, that's the document that kind of has. But yeah, yeah, know. I'm here. Yeah, just not sure. I, I seems like I have um, noise in my background, and could be irritating. Um, uh, but the updates about that is um. One thing that um, Ruth has forgotten to mention, I think um, we need to know right now um, what email we are going to use to send out reports. Um, I forwarded uh, a sample of how uh, on the developer side, not from the designer side. I thought that email would be having um, some of the content that I forwarded to maybe some people whose emails I had in my directory. And then two, um, we're just having an issue with, um, for test purposes, we cannot uh, try to, we, we, we cannot, we cannot resolve or redirect um, some of the pages from the GitHub or auth because of the cross origin errors, but uh, it's something that we are going to resolve with uh, Precious after this call because I think it is just the only thing that is stopping um, the front end people from connecting the back end to the front end, whereas everything else is already in place. Like they already placeholders, but just the connection 
was having issues because we are trying to communicate with different servers. So for security purposes, there are some errors with the cores. So I actually have an answer, sort of an answer for you on the email. Uh, I talked to Sarah about this and we can use an all in open source email. Um, I, what I'm not clear on and maybe Sarah, you we, maybe we should sort this out or we can talk about it here um, is who's going to monitor that inbox and if it's going to be a, a push only and like respond to something somebody else or if we want that to be like the email that people they do have questions or didn't get something like if that's the who they're going to contact well i think that's a question for the whole group because managing the email is uh, another context because i'm sure there may be maybe queries or inquiries or and even also the report is passing there but me, I may need access for only uh, development and test purposes. But after that, I, I think th we need someone who is fully responsible for that. Well, I think that I think really, if we think about it, the intention of the email is almost like one of those no reply emails that you would get when you sign up for something, because it's really just a transport mechanism for delivering updates and reports. I don't think it's intended to be a like a back and forth communication email. So. We might just consider using something that is like a no reply. And that way we don't have to worry about monitoring the email. I mean, this seems like the right use case for that kind of email. So, and then what happens when there are issues with uh, maybe someone wants to have some kind of communication, back and forth communication, maybe concerning the report? Uh, I think we, we can um, provide them, you know, just direct people when they have issues to the GitHub issue tracker. Or to, I mean, that seems like the, the issue, an issue tracker on GitHub where if people are having a problem, they would go there. Um, we could even include that at the bottom of each email that, you know, if you're having any issues or um, something's not working for you, um, please open an issue in this issue tracker on GitHub. I think that's quite um, a perfect implementation because, well, that makes things so open and, um anyone else can check in the issues, but of course then they should be someone who is like, uh, um, first of all, which repository are you putting the issue on and uh, who is can, really there to manage um, yeah. the issues? We can pick, we can choose a repository to put the issue tracker on. Um, and then I, I think it's easier to distribute the responsibilities across many people for managing an issue tracker compared with an email address. So I think it um, that also lends itself well to that. Well, I think I think I buy the the point of the issue tracker because it gives chance to a lot of people to be engaged into maybe a particular issue if it needs like um, engagement of more than one person, which is not the case with an email where one person is responsible for a certain um, um, issue or reply. So maybe we can just decide on. Um, who, which particular people are responsible, maybe this particular team or if, uh, some people that have been selected for that. And then we can also choose the repository. And I think, um, does that make the maintainers at all in, at all in open source.com email null and void? <laughs> because I think it was already set up. Uh, I, I don't know if it makes it null and void. There might be a separate purpose for that. Um, but but I think I, I think in terms of managing it and making this as simple and sustainable as possible, we do kind of want like a no reply for the stuff that comes from an automated system. Yeah, that that, that was a perfect um, that was a perfect insight. I think I'm also for the I'm also for the no reply email. Yeah, but then I think the other discussion could be around what repository and who maintains, which team maintains the issues on that repository. My my personal preference is to if if it's so Sarah if it's cool with GitHub as to do that no reply email I like that a lot and I like the idea of doing issues maybe we could just open as another issue or another repo in the all in org specifically for badging communications or badging feedback or whatever we want to call it but just specific for that because 
the all in org has a ton of stuff in it. <laughs> it has a ton of stuff in it between all in for students and they're all having their own repos and then the all in for maintainers and all of the stuff going on there. So I think there needs to be like something central for badging for just this feedback. But that's my that's my personal preference. I have no strong feelings. There's no issue on our end um, with the GitHub team. I think it's more just you let us know what support looks like and what we can do to um, set stuff up for success. But yes, happy to support wherever needed. I'll just let this team take the lead. I think I was also um, trying to think of GitHub discussions. I don't know um, whether I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which of them has cool features for discussions, uh, but. GitHub has GitHub discussions, which I think are, um, could be another good place to not only, uh, I, uh, we can skip the issue of uh, creating um, a repository and then um, creating maybe, uh, okay, I think that the GitHub discussions can be tied to a particular repository, but like there is no code or no what, just a readme file and a discussion board where people can raise issues and then we can have like a forum of uh, people who can reply to those issues. But I do not know, haven't used it so extensively to know how good it's a replacement to whatever we, we are discussing. Maybe it's something to explore. So Sarah, if, would you be able to set that email up? Um, the new reply email? I can set up the, the repo in the all in org. And I can uh, I can enable discussions in there. I can enable whatever we want. So um, I don't mind taking that action item just to get that out of the way. If you're able to set, or if you can tell me who to talk to to set that up, I can help. That's also valid. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, let me um, do a little digging. I'm not exactly sure how to set that up, but it can definitely take that as an action item. Um, could you all let me know when you would need that completed by, just so I can have an idea of timeline? Well, not to be like on pressure, but as soon as yesterday, because for okay. test purposes. <laughs> okay. yeah, I, th I, th I, think, I think to keep things moving, we could use a placeholder email. And if there's an email that already exists, we could use that until okay, we have yeah, this yeah. no reply one set I think, I think for now we can use the maintainers at allinopensos.com email because it looks like it was already set up. I think I just need another um, the password to that because um, on my side of the implementation, when I am sending out like an email, there is need for authentication, like so that um, my implementation acts like a, a mail client. So, for purposes of authentication, they may need they maybe need to provide um, the password to that email. Another thing, sorry, you not to hop in here. I'm also happy to set up a separate email account just for the DEI badging team. Like um, where you all have full access to it, can edit it, um, can edit, um, or sorry, can monitor any of the responses that you would like to receive through that account. Um, and it can be completely separate from the maintainer's account. We're not really using the maintainer's account for anything specifically. <laughs> um, but in the case that it does become a little bit more active and you do want to start communicating out through a specific email address, we can add on another account specifically for DEI badging and set up full access. I don't mean to throw in a third option, but just let me know. Um, that's easy for me to set up right away. I could get that done today. Well, for now, we had a place holder, which was my personal email, but then we can just change it to maintainers at allinopensource.org until you can okay. figure out when we can get the no reply email. I and then you need that one, like, um, another one. Okay. Yeah, 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 sure. Thank you. But um, on a lighter note, um, I thought I could um, share um, a link here to the bare bones of the implementation that is not connected to the front end so that um, some of you can be able to test that out. But that would mean tweaking some of the lines of code because how it acts in production is different from how it acts in um, development so when i send the deployed code here it won't really bring the test results i would want everyone to check out on so 
I wanted to do that, but it won't make sense because whatever results will be thrown back at you will be like in a JSON format, which which is not really interactive. So until the front end is really up, we cannot interact with the API because it's now only used by the front end team to consume whatever data it is um, throwing back. I think that's fair and valid and totally fine. <laughs> and we're out of time anyway, so <laughs> it all works out. It all works out. So maybe next week it'll we'll be in more of a position to do that. Um, but yeah, sure, sure. I'm meeting with Precious um, today, so I hope we can um, sort it out. I don't know how long it will take. You know, debugging is quite funny. <laughs> awesome. All right. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? Mine was a, just a question for Ruth on that copy page that you sent, the Google Doc. You can Anybody can work in there to suggest changes or content? Sure. Anyone can drop in comments or suggest. Okay. I'll start. Yeah, I, think that's, that. yep. I think that's in the projects, in the project badging folder under the chaos stuff too. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'll just, I'll work just to make sure I'm working in the right place, but I just work in that Google Doc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for coming today. It was really great to see everyone and we'll see you here same time next week. Thanks. All right. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.